Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm only human. Oh, I'm just a woman. Lord, help me believe in what I could be and all that I am. Hey, show me the stairway. Oh, Lord, I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. Day at a time. One day at a time. Sweet Jesus. Oh, that's all I'm asking from you. Oh, just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday is gone, sweet Jesus. And tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the way. One day at a time. Day at a time. Lord, help me today. Lord, please show me the way. One day at a time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, when you remember these old songs that we use when we're coming up in Christianity, it's kind of still fresh, refreshing, and edifying. I don't know how many of you felt that way. Yeah, those hallelujah. are the songs. <laughs> Praise <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, those are the songs. Those are really, really the songs. Praise God. So today our team says the limitless woman. Wow. Um, it's, it's a team that I taught out. I've just given out everything and just sit back and listen. But when you guys started talking, I said, okay, let me just come in and put together, highlight some things that I think you need to know. You see... Being a limitless woman simply means embracing all parts of who you are. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Embracing all parts, becoming a wholesome woman, you know, becoming a strong believer in being limitless as it were. You know, Amen. bringing out the true you, the fabulous you, the beauty you, the you Amen. that the Lord was talking about when he said, I have made you in my image and after my likeness. Amen. The limitless woman is a very powerful woman because it's a woman that knows who she is and what she, the Lord created her to be. Is a woman that knows what her mandate is, is a woman that knows what her purpose is, and is a woman that does not just know these things, but a woman that is determined to live these things out. She is determined to become the role model that the younger generation is actually looking at to also model their lives so when a woman becomes a limitless woman one of the things that happens almost immediately is that she becomes an attractive woman she becomes very attractive in fact that is the major temptation she faces because when you are a limitless woman every man wants you because they see your capacity they see your potential they see the difference-making capacity in you. You know, you become the difference-maker. You become a woman that stands up 
to the forces that comes against them. So they, they want you because they want someone to be able to shield them. That's why even in the Proverbs 31 woman, they talked about that the husband is actually really proud of her. He, he, he's proud to be associated with a limitless woman. So if you begin to look at a limitless woman from the love angle, the limitless love side, you know, uh, Victoria sang, Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. You see, it is described in First Corinthians 13, the kind of love that it's, you know, that love is so powerful that it comes against every force and it wins. It is sacrificial in nature. That is the kind of love you find out that Rebecca exhibited when she told Jacob that if your father is about to place a curse, let the curse be on me. That is the kind of love that Christ himself gave to us. And that love that Christ gave to us, he said um, that he became a curse so that we will be costless. And by the time you begin to look at even that of the limitless possibilities, the limitless grace, you begin to tailor it down. So the first thing I want to bring out about a limitless woman is that the limitless woman is a lover. She's a lover. <laughs> you see, the Bible, the Bible talks about Jesus as being the groom and the church as being the bride. The relationship between a bride and groom is a love relationship. So if you are a limitless woman, you're supposed to be able to teach the people around you love. And when you begin to teach love, you actually begin to convert those people to become the church. Because you and I know that the church is not the building. The church is you and me. And when you begin to live that kind of life, you begin to fulfill the purpose of which you were created, which is to become a help meet. Yeah. As a help meet to mankind, you're supposed to help mankind achieve what God wants them to achieve, which is a church without a spot, a church that can love and love well, love right. When you're in love with someone, you know how it comes. You know all the things you're willing and ready to do for the person. So when you become the limitless woman that we are talking about, who is a lover, you carry all the nature of God that makes the Bible say that God is love. And as you begin to live it, it becomes contagious to the people in your environment. Amen. As they begin to connect and contact what you carry, they become the church without spot. Because the church without spot is the church that is a lover. Yeah. That's why Jesus said something that in days like this, the love of many would wax cold. And it is only us that can keep that love coming. Even the world people till tomorrow, some of them make movies. They make movies, they will say it's like re, re, rekindling the love. They do this, this. And you will see it is women that were championing those things. So for every incubate woman in the house that wants to become a limitless woman, become a lover. I don't know if I'm talking to someone in the house this evening. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, the limitless woman knows her possibilities are limitless. She knows. How does she know that her possibilities are limitless? It is because she is naturally a woman of prayer. Amen. And you cannot be a woman of prayer and not assess limitless possibilities. It is through prayer that you move mountains. It is through prayer that you stop the devil. It is through prayer that even the children you give birth, you mold their destinies. Amen. 
So the limitless woman, number two, understands that her possibilities are limitless. Remember that in the past we have talked about how we are a people of prayer from the windows of Jeremiah when the nation had an issue and they said they should go call the willing women. They even told the women, teach your daughters. Now, do not forget that when the Bible is making any reference at all, he calls both male and female man. But when prayer was involved, prayer to deliver destinies was involved. What did it do? It assigned it specifically to women. That's what makes you have limitless possibilities. So the limitless woman, she knows that the possibilities are limitless. What she can do is limitless. She can be anywhere in the world and save the, the relative that is about to just on her knees. So the limitless woman knows her, the, that her possibilities are limitless. Now that brings me to the third point that the limitless woman is a woman of prayer. Is a woman of prayer. Truth be told, you cannot be a successful woman you cannot be a fulfilled woman. You cannot be an achieving woman without being a woman of prayer. And do you know why? Because women are the prey. They are the prey the predator is after. Who is the predator? The predator is the devil. How did I know that they are the prey that the predator is after? The Lord already said that the battle will be between you and the woman. He didn't stop there. He said between her seed and... Oh my God. Listen to me and listen good. Children of God. The women of God. You just have to be a woman of prayer. And because I want people to begin to inculcate and learn how to pray at intervals, intermittent, just like you do intermittent fasting, when you want to slim down, when you want to become beautiful and gain shape. I want everybody, yes, for us to gain spiritual shape. Mm. Mm? What we need is not intermittent fasting, it's intermittent prayer. That is why on different groups at different times, we put in prayer some 40 minutes, some 1 hour, some 30 minutes. So you find out that before you're done with the whole prayer here, prayer there, prayer in a day, you must have given at least the tithe of that day in the place of prayer. Wisdom Bible says it's profitable to direct. Children of God, the limitless woman is a wise woman. Until you become a wise woman, you cannot build your home. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. A lot of homes are failing because the women that are the women of the ladies of the house are not wise. Mm. The ladies of the house, they are not wise. Hear me and hear me good. Scriptures cannot be broken. God cannot lie. Proverbs 14.1 clearly says, Every wise woman builds her home. But he said that the foolish tears it down with their own hands. Amen. I pray for us today that we will be wise women. It is a wise woman that will not compete with other women. It is a wise woman that will not see the need to be involved in any form of gossip. It is a wise woman, you know, I tell people that the genesis of gossip is laziness. Mm. When people are idle, they have to fill the vacuum, so they need to talk. Mm. It is a wise woman that will not be envious of another woman. Or what the Lord is doing with that person. Or what the Lord has done for that person's family. It's only a wise woman. So you're not just to build your home, you're to build the 
community and environment around you via your behavior, role modeling. Amen. That's why it beats my imagination to see married women on bomb shots and expect that their children will turn out better. They won't. When their children go half naked, they should not complain. Because they started the style. There is this dress I saw one day. It's a net. Net. And this lady wore just the net. And was wearing, there's this pant, pant when, when I had to say it's called tongues. So she's wearing tongues and she's wearing a net. And there's this stuff they said they just put it on the nipple that that's the bra. And she wore it to a supermarket. Amen. That's the agenda of attack. That's the predator catching the prey. The prey. We must wise up and teach our daughters wisdom. Amen. The place of wisdom cannot be overemphasized. Amen. Bible said that wisdom is profitable to direct. The limitless woman is hardworking. I don't know point number what it is, but it's one of the points. The limitless woman is hardworking. When you go to Proverbs chapter number 31, you will be amazed at what that woman was doing. Hard working. Hard working. The limitless hard working woman is a woman that will be cause of either hurt or what she wants to achieve act like that woman that went and put a sacrifice on the rock and kept on staying there sending out the birds that tried to come and perch on it in scripture you can imagine how long she would sit there just to pursue the birds hard work hard work she does not have the space to eat the bread of idleness she understands what the Bible says when it says, Go to the ant, ye sluggard, and learn. She gets it. So she's hardworking. She's not someone that, that has given herself to laziness. She wakes up as at when due, prays as at when due, does what she needs to do as at when due. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Child of God, the limitless woman is a builder. She's a builder. She knows how to place the building blocks. She's not the woman that pushes down the building. Yeah. For you to be a builder, you need to be an encourager. For you to be a builder, you need to be able to, to put the house you have built in order. I can never forget the woman called Abigail. My sake. Yeah. Remember what she did? The husband would have got the whole family killed. Meaning that the husband tore down what was built already. It's not easy to get married, begin to have children, and then one day everything goes down the drain. It's not easy. Amen. She was not like Job's wife. Job's wife was not a builder. Even came to Job, he said, cause God and die. The builder builds you with her character. The builder builds you with the words of her lips. It's seasoned with salt. Praise the Lord, somebody. So we have to be intentional if you have to become a limitless woman. The limitless woman is a transformer. <laughs> She's a transformer. Anything you put in her hands, she turns it to become better. The man gives her a sperm, she brings out a baby. The man gives her a house, she brings a home in place. The man gives her groceries, she brings out cooked beautiful food. I, I cannot forget the, the jello fries in, 
in, in, in London. I think that was Ghana Jell Jellof Rice, I think so. Hallelujah, somebody. It was the action of a limitless woman who was a transformer. Hallelujah, praise God. So she was giving uncooked rice and she brought it cooked, tasty. That. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. So the limitless woman also adapts to any situation. The limitless woman will not be involved with her husband. Praise God, somebody. She will not be involved with a husband like that of uh, uh, Job's wife that I used as an example before. When the man was going down, he will be like, cause God and die. No. She adapts and become an encourager. Don't worry. It will be well. I don't know if you understand. She adapts to any situation she finds herself. She adapts. She takes it with her might and she continues. Praise the Lord. She comes and she sees that there is famine in the land. She adjusts. If she used to spend probably uh, 5000 she reduces it to 3000 and still does something good. She adapts. She sees the situation on ground and she keys in and she becomes okay. Oh, I can never forget Moses' mother and sister. Very beautiful, adapting women. They lived in an era where children were being killed, slaughtered. To adapt to the situation, they were taking turns in hiding the boy. And at a point, they couldn't hide him anymore. His voice was coming out in the place of tears. And they went to put him in the waters. And as little as the sister was then, the, he, he was following her. Following the brother. Following the brother. And of course, she's a woman that knows that her possibilities are limitless. So immediately somebody took the brother, she ran out and offered help. Because she has prayed the destiny of that child, that your destiny will not die. The mother has cried over the child, your light will not be quenched. So by brooding and staying in the place of prayer, when they came out and met the woman, he said, do you need a nurse? She didn't have a choice. Because when you are a limitless woman, you are favored by all. As you are making the request, they are saying yes. Can we add any other thing to what you want? Why? Because you have taken care of the things that would have been a barrier between you and the favor. I pray for someone in the house. After this edition of Incubate Women Meeting, you would ask yourself, God, what nature of favor is hitting me? Because you're going to be having back-to-back -back favor encounters. Back-to-back -back favor encounters. In the morning favor, in the noontime favor, in the night season's favor. Amen. That same God is still God now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the limitless woman also has the weak. Wisdom of what? The serpent. I've taught a series on the wisdom of the serpent. Where did I get it from? I sent you um, uh, 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 among the wolves or something. He said, but you know how you're going to overcome? You're going to have the wisdom of the serpent, but be as gentle as the dove. What is the wisdom of the serpent? Who is the serpent? The serpent is actually the devil is the wisdom of the devil if you go to genesis you will see where the serpent had to communicate with eve if eve had the wisdom of the serpent you would have been able to overcome that temptation in fact anybody that does not have the wisdom of the serpent does not have the right to quote the scripture saying i am not ignorant of the devices of the enemy it's not true you're highly ignorant of the devices of the enemy you can only say that when you have the wisdom of the serpent. There is a reason why the Bible encourages us to have that particular wisdom. You are to have the wisdom so you will identify when that wisdom has come to play. Yes. Amen. That wisdom is a wisdom that is filled with subtlety. Mm. They present to you something cunningly. Mm. 
He said to Eve, did the Lord say you shouldn't eat this thing? It's not true. The truth is that the day you eat it, you will become like a God. Now, what was even the meeting held before man was created? The meeting said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So the devil offered Eve what Eve already had. I don't know if I'm talking to someone. Subtility. Even the Bible said it very clearly. Now the serpent was more subtle than other animals. So what the devil offered Eve was, in fact, if Eve was sensitive enough, you will also know that the Bible already said to us, ye are gods. Even if she didn't read it in scripture or didn't know the meeting that was held, children of God, the child of an elephant is an elephant. The child of a dog is a dog. So the child of a God is what? A God. A God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So in all oh father, you will become like a God. And Eve was already a God. May we not be deceived by the serpent in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. And God told them, the day you do this, you die. Now, she ate it. What happened? Her God nature died. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if I'm communicating. But Amen. because she was still alive, she said, ah, ah, you see now, not knowing that what made her a God was God. She now became helpless. She now had to struggle before she was able to eat. She was no longer invincible. Same thing. When he came to Jesus on the mountain of temptation. Listen to me. Why are you a son of God or a daughter of God? Because simple. Yeah. God does not have grandchildren. Everybody we call ourselves what? Children of God. So all of us are gods. That's why you call him the God of gods. The small gods, us. Right? He went to, the, he went to Jesus. He said almost the same thing to Jesus. You know what he said to Jesus? If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Who was Jesus? Jesus was the son of God. And you're telling him if you're the son of God. Okay, even if nobody knew he was the son of God, maybe the people were not prophetic. It was only John the Baptist that was prophetic. At the altar of baptism, God let everybody know, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And at the end of the day, you're still going to tempt him and you're asking him if you are the son of God. So every limitless woman should have the wisdom of the serpent when you have the wisdom of the serpent he raises scripture because he can also raise scriptures then he raises a scripture for you you have a counter scripture because you know that this is not god that this is the voice of the devil you will remind him i am not ignorant of your devices get thee out of here yeah praise god somebody so, the limitless woman, <laughs> you know, before I go to the next one, you know what the, you know what the woman used against Samson? What the woman used against Samson was the wisdom of the serpent. Yeah. That was what he used, subtlety. And he got the secret. And she acted. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. The limitless woman understands governance. And you'll be like, ah, what's the apostle talking about? Children of God. In the days where women were not understood, were not accepted in positions, Deborah was a judge. Deborah was a judge. You cannot look at yourself as a woman and decide that there are some Positions you can never get to. You don't allow people limit you or limit. And where the limitations come from starts from our mindset. Yes. Because the society has put a mindset on the ground concerning women. 
Hey, woman, know who you are. Yeah. They've put a mindset. So people come and look at you after all, she's a woman. Most men think that the only thing we are good at is for the other room. No. You are also made in the image and in the likeness of God. You are also created for exploits. There is something the world needs to know. And you are the only one that has the mandate to make the world know it. Yes, Lord. Refuse to be deceived by what the world is saying concerning women. Refuse to accept what the Lord what the world portrays us as. Anybody that wants to create a, a movie or create a song and he wants it to sell, it hires women and tell them to go naked, I'll pay you. It is only women that do not know their value that we come out and shake up themselves to be paid for peanuts. When you have gold mine inside of you, yeah. there is something about you the world needs to discover. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. As children of God, the earlier we begin to know, get that knowledge, the better. Because the children of the world are taking positions. Mm -hmm. And we are not. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Even in those days, if we're not talking about Deborah, what of this woman that was a terror? Mm. Even to a prophet, a major prophet at that. Mm. Amen? Amen? Because of that particular woman, a major prophet decided to run. A prophet that had killed 400 prophets of Baal alone. Jezebel said, <laughs> Oh, if I do not deal with you, he flee. He, he, he ran out. A prophet that said there will be no rain and there was no rain. A woman harassed him out of space. His job was not done as at that time. But because he was complaining and disturbing the Lord, the Lord told him to give the mantle to another person. Amen, somebody. So as a limitless woman, you have to understand governance and understand the power that you have. Oh, when we're talking about a limitless woman and her adapting structure, can we remember Sarah? When they got to that place, Abraham said, just tell them you're my sister. Instead, if she fits in instantly, adapted to it. They asked her, who are you? He said, oh, I'm, I'm the sister. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes, the limitless woman is not a liability but an asset yes. most women that are complaining in their husband's house is because they are liabilities yes. they don't have anything they bring to the table ah. the only thing they bring to the table is their progress in the room is that wrong? That mentality should be killed. You are more than that. You are made for more. Amen. Your husband should be able to be looking for solution and come to you. We are called help meets. Yeah. When his money is not enough, he's supposed to tell you, babe, can you give me some? And say, how much do you need? Grow your mentality to the extent that you know that as a woman, you are supposed to be an asset and not a liability. When a woman becomes an asset, it becomes difficult to, for a man to wake up in the morning and say, leave my house. Because if care is not taking the house, it might be the woman's house. So he cannot wake up and say, leave your house. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Children of God. To be a limitless woman, you have to be a risk taker. The limitless woman is a risk taker. Look at our sister Rahab. Imagine if they caught her that she was hiding spies, what would have been her faith? 
but she took that risk yeah. and she secured the destiny of her generation. Amen. A limitless woman is a risk taker. Look at Esther. She said, if I perish, I perish. Before you know it, she saved her whole clan because she was a risk taker. The limitless woman is focused and persistent because she knows what she wants. The judge said, get out. The woman kept on going back to the judge. Kept on going back to the judge. Kept on going back. She was persistent. She was focused. I need justice from you. The judge found out that um, this one is not business as usual. Better we settle her so that I have my peace. Same with our sister Ruth. Where you go, I go. Where you sleep, I sleep. Your God shall be my God. She was focused, she was persistent. She knew what she wanted. Amen. Of course, Opa did not know what she needed. Yeah. And so immediately she was spoken to. She found it as a reason to flee. Hmm. So I cannot follow this cursed woman. I came to her, my husband died. Nothing to show for my years of staying with her. But Ruth knew what she wanted. And at the end of the day, she found herself in the genealogy line of Jesus Christ. What an awesome thing to do. Amen. The limitless woman is a woman of faith. Very important, we highlight. Yes. Remember the story of that woman in 2 Kings 4. She's not just a woman of faith. She is also... All right, we'll get there. Let's just do a woman of faith first. She's a woman of faith. In 2 Kings 4, the prophet was the one that asked her, said, that asked the steward, what does she need? They said she doesn't have a child. The prophet prayed, yeah. by this time next year, you will have a child. Actually, she had a child. Then one day, this child that she had looked for, a barren person, got pregnant, became, had a child, it was growing, grew to a certain point. The child died. The child died. The woman simply said, no. I didn't ask for this child. So you don't come give me heartache. Nothing is wrong with him. Don't put him in the prophet's bed. Amen. And she decided to go and meet the prophet. In verse 26, the prophet said, please run now to meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? Look at the woman's answer. It is well. <laughs> She's a woman of faith. She doesn't see the circumstances. She sees what the Lord is saying. Yeah. She doesn't hear the voice of the people. She hears what the voice of God is saying. She understands that there is a voice that speaks better things than the voice of everything that is speaking around her. She knew that what it's supposed to be is that when men are saying that there's a casting down, her position should be that there's a lifting up. So the limitless woman is a woman of faith. Build your faith intentionally. Refuse to confess what others are confessing. Refuse to see what they are seeing. See what the Lord is saying. Hallelujah, somebody. The limitless woman is a wholesome steward. Is a wholesome, did you hear that, that adjective I put there? A wholesome steward. Who is a wholesome steward? A wholesome steward is someone that serves the Lord intentionally with their time, serves the Lord with their service, service itself, maybe gets to church, sweep the church, or clean the church, or do something in church, serves the Lord even with her finances. Amen. A wholesome steward is a, is a steward that is interested in kingdom advancement. Amen. Praise God. 
So the limitless woman is a wholesome steward. The woman we spoke about in 2 Kings, what was it she was doing? Anytime the prophet was passing by, she saw that she knew that this is a man of God. And she now decided, okay, since this is a man of God, let us give him a place. So that when he passes here, he will have somewhere to rest. Let us give him food. He will eat. That was what she was doing that made the man ask, what does she need? And here is my point. She was not doing it for gains. She didn't do it because she needed a child. She did it because she was interested in kingdom advancement. She said, let me take care of God's servant. That type of woman, imagine her in church. What she would do. And when that becomes your stance, when it has to do with God, it's amazing what the Lord will do with you. Because God is interested in his stewards. When you become a wholesome steward, some things you don't pray about it. Say so you will serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread. He will bless your water. He takes sicknesses away from you. That's just a covenant. Just because you're serving, you don't pray for some things. Sickness does not have rights to come near you just because you are serving. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Because of our time, because I know that Today is still a Friday, so we'll pray by nine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, the limitless woman is a fearless woman and a warrior woman. Remember that our mandate, today we treated the mandate of the woman. Our mandate makes us a warrior. But the fearless path, you know, Scripture said that the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but the spirit of boldness and what? A sound mind. Remember the five daughters of Zelophehad. It didn't matter that uh, they were not men. All that mattered is that they said, share this among the children of Israel. They were fearless enough to go and meet the prophet. We know our father didn't have a male child. Our father is dead. We're not going to leave our father's name in oblivion. <laughs> Amen. And when Moses went to meet the Lord, the Lord said, grant them in accordance to their hearts. I want you to begin to pray. Tell the Lord, make me a fearless woman indeed. Amen. 